Boao Forum for Asia opens on Sunday in Boao Town in Hainan Province. The four-day event will discuss topics like sustainable development of rural areas and island economies. More than 4,000 participants have signed up for the annual event this time. For more on that, let's cross live to our reporter Zhou Jiaxing in Boao. So, uh, Jiaxing, let's talk about the latest. The forum has just released its annual report on the outlook for Asian economies and integration process. How does it look? Yes, Panda. Uh, the conference actually released two reports this morning. Uh, one is uh, the forum's annual report on Asian econo economic outlook. It says Asia entered a severe recession in 2020, but met a rapid rebound in the first quarter of this year. Uh, the pandemic has caused a high unemployment rate, declining income growth and rising income inequality, as well as reduced trade and cross-border investment. An Asian economy's overall debt level has further reason why the financial market has witnessed drastic fluctuations. Experts say the debt issue yet is a significant challenge for regional countries, uh, but the large-scale emergency measures and economic stimulus policies to a certain extent have managed to ease this uh, health crisis. Digital economy opportunities have ushered a new technology governance and cooperation and promoted the uh, resumption of products, stabilized the economy situation. And the report also says that the Asian economic performance has been much better than that of the rest of the world. And that has further increased Asia's share in the global economic aggregate. And China, as Asia's largest economy, led the continent with a growth rate of 2.3% in 2020. And meanwhile, Asian uh, countries have advanced their economic and trade cooperation, particularly uh, the signing of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, or RCEP, last year. Uh, the deal is estimated to produce 100 billion U.S. dollars annually uh, to the global economy in the following decade. And the report continues to address uh, the tenacity and vitality of the Belt and Road Initiative, which is uh, the China-proposed infrastructure connectivity cooperation across continents. It says that through through related projects, trade and investment have grown against the trend. And though the report has indicated moderate growth forecast for Asia this year, which is above 6.5 percent, the International Monetary Fund last week upgraded that to um, 8.6 percent. But things is COVID-19 coastlates and renewed lockdowns may limit the economic prospects of some Southeast Asian countries. So uh, the forum comes amid considerable differences in containment results investor sentiments and monetary policies across regional countries. Its second report on sustainable development, as you said, uh, refers to health care, infrastructure, green transformation and digital deficits are bottling, uh, bottlenecking the sustainable uh, recovery. So it is really a call for the Asian countries to join hands now and uh, tackle together this pressing issues. Back to you, Pandit. Thank you very much. Our reporter Zhou Jiaxing in Boao in Hainan province. Now let's take a look at the big picture. The pace towards achieving the UN Sustainable Development Goals has been far from satisfying globally owing to insufficient action among nations. That's according to a report issued on Sunday at the Boao Forum. The report cited countries' deficits in improving areas such as health care, green measures and the digital economy. The pandemic has exposed weaknesses in healthcare systems in many countries, such as the lack of financial capacity and the medical resources. The report also noted shortcomings in implementing green measures. Countries need to create more job opportunities related to the green economy and further support research and innovation to combat climate change. There are also deficits in the digital economy, with the top digital companies highly concentrated in a particular region, some nations need to step up their efforts to narrow the digital divide. Some countries in Asia still have underdeveloped internet infrastructures. But during the pandemic, many people have been forced to work remotely through the internet. This has created an opportunity for many countries to advance their digital transformation. Now let's cross live to Professor John Gon. He's now in the U.S. state of Virginia. So, uh, Professor, let's start with the recovery of the Asian economy, which is in focus for this time's Boao Forum annual 
meeting. Now, talking about China, many are saying that its successful rebound in the first quarter this year was largely due to its uh, achievement in bringing the pandemic under control. Do you think the same story can go to uh, other Asian economies? What do you think uh, is the relationship between containing the epidemic and recovering the economy? Well, first, let me say that uh, China's first quarter uh, blockbuster performance is more than just the speedy recovery. I think if you look at the subsectors of the GDP growth, uh, there are significant growth in these high tech sectors in the uh, sunrise industry. So I think there's got to be a structural change going on right now in China, uh, partly or wholly as a result of the pandemic. But, you know, I think the situation in China is getting much, much better these days. Uh, now, speaking of the rest of the Asia, I think um, I think overall, you know, if you look at the performance uh, in terms of uh, uh, battling the pandemic, certainly Asia as a whole uh, fares much better than the rest of the world. When we look at the numbers, uh, especially in Southeast Asia, and I'm actually excluding China for this case, uh, it, it's actually not bad I mean, in overall. So I think the prospect of a speedy economic recovery uh, is still very much in the bag. Um, and I think uh, the only uh, doubt in my mind is the country of India. I think, you know, India, as you can see, uh, the numbers are still uh, going quite high and uh, it's a very large economy. Uh, so I think overall, as long as India picks up, the overall picture in Asia should be much, much better uh, compared to last year. Uh, so uh, having said that, are you saying uh, Asia still could be the engine of uh, global growth this year during a pandemic? Um, well, Asia's share of the total global economy is very large. I mean, it's more than 30%. Uh, and, and, and these are the, the largest economies, one of the largest economies in the world, uh, like China's, uh, India's, Indonesia, Japan, uh, South Korea. These are the heavyweight economies. So, you know, they're doing much better. Certainly, uh, uh, bodes very well for the rest of the world, especially the developing world that are very much reliant upon these countries, you know, being a driver of growth for a lot of them. Um, but, uh, um, you know, as I said, it's still, you know, very much uh, depending on the situation with the pandemic. Um, I think that, you know, the risk here is that uh, this is just based on the experience of the past a year and a half or so, uh, uh, over a year or so. You know, every time people think that this pandemic is going to subside, it comes back pretty strong. Um, and even though, you know, this time, hopefully it's going to be different because we have the uh, decisive weapon of uh, uh, vaccination. And I think these uh, four or five uh, vaccinations, uh, vaccines are doing you know, quite well these days. So I hope uh, this will make a difference. And, uh, um, and, I, and I hope that, uh, uh, you know, this COVID-19 thing will be followed the same full step of uh, the Spanish flu that only lasts uh, 18 months. So by the uh, time of uh, later this year, hopefully uh, we should be able to wipe this COVID off the earth, hopefully. Thank you very much, Professor John Gunn in McLean, Virginia. Actually, this year marks the 20th anniversary of the Boal Forum for Asia. Since 2001, leaders uh, from its member countries have forged what's now known as the Asian Proposal. Yang Chengxi has more. For 20 years, the Boao Forum for Asia has embodied the region's collaborative wisdom in responding to international economic challenges. It was proposed a year after the 1997 Asian financial crisis and inaugurated in 2001. Since then, the forum has gone through three distinctive phases. For the first few years of the Boao Forum, the key phrase was win-win. The idea that global trade and investment cooperation is not a zero-sum game. It's been at the heart of what's known as the Asian Proposal, something that the Boao Forum claims to champion. In 2008, a new global economic crisis hit, shifting the world's economic discourse. The Boao Forum was no exception. Over the following years, the themes featured keywords like growth, recovery and development. And China, along with several other economies in Asia, has managed to maintain healthy levels of growth. Since 2013, the Forum has embraced another change. It's become more forward-looking and herald China's vision for the future. That year, Chinese President Xi Jinping laid out his vision for deepening regional cooperation. 
China will increase connectivity with its neighbors, actively explore the building of a regional financing platform, advance economic integration within the region, and thus increase its competitiveness. And it was later that year that President Xi proposed the Belt and Road Initiative, aimed at promoting joint prosperity across the Eurasian landmass. The message of his next keynote speech at Boao, which was in 2015, also went beyond Asia. He elaborated another of his key visions, which is building a community with a shared future for mankind. To build a community with a shared future, we must uphold mutual respect and equal treatment among all countries and commit to win-win cooperation and common development. We must ensure common, comprehensive, cooperative, and sustainable security. Different civilizations must draw on one another's strengths and enhance mutual learning. In 2018, trade protectionism was growing in many economies. Once again, President Xi reaffirmed the values that China and the Forum upholds. China's open gates will not close but will be open wider. On November of that year, the first China International Import Expo was held in Shanghai. Many global companies continue to find opportunities in working with their Chinese partners. This year, the forum aims to focus on joining hands to strengthen global governance and advance Belt and Road cooperation. Experts say it's a continuation of the same spirit of openness and collaboration that the Boao Forum has stood for for two decades. Yang Chengxi, CGTN, Boao, Hainan Province. With people seeking safer transportation options during the pandemic, cycling has become a top choice for many. This has led to unexpected growth in China's bike exports. Go on reports. COVID-19 has forced many to rethink how they commute, exercise and play. And this for some means getting back on two wheels. And I love taking the subway. I'm a big public transportation person. But that's not an option right now, and it's just been great to get on the bike. But the surge in bicycle demand, coupled with disruptions in global supply chains, have sent bike distributors across the world scrambling for imported products, with many turning to one of the world's largest bike exporters. Now I'm heading to Shanghai Phoenix Bike Company, one of China's largest homegrown bike exporters. So here workers are taking apart the bicycle that have been just put together and adjusted for safety standard. And this actually helped them fit into a smaller box over there. And this is to reduce the cost of shipping overseas. Experts say biking is among Chinese industries that have seen increase in exports but there's still more to be done. We will not only focus on exporting cycling products, but also international collaboration in terms of capital, talent, and technique standards in future. Plus, the bike boom may not end with the pandemic, with the World Health Organization backing cycling as a major part of a post-pandemic grain recovery. Gaoang, CGTN, Jiangsu Province. On Monday, the Boao Forum for Asia will focus on the new medical ecology. The pandemic has promoted the integration of artificial intelligence and healthcare systems. So, how this will change the healthcare ecosystem is a new focus in public health. So be sure to tune in uh, tomorrow and CGTN will bring you a comprehensive coverage on the ongoing annual meeting of the Boao Forum for Asia. You're watching Global Watch on CGTN. Coming up, 